Module 5, Storage and Dispensing Locations. Upon completion of Module 5, participants should be able to discuss common locations for storage and dispensing of ethanol blended fuels and will have a basic understanding of these sites. Often when the response community thinks of storing and dispensing ethanol blended fuels, we fail to think of the retail fueling station on the corner. As a result, we can believe that if there is no bulk storage operation or production operation in our jurisdiction, we have little to worry about. This could not be further from the truth. Today, nearly all gasoline in the U.S. is blended with some level of ethanol. Ethanol and ethanol blended fuels are found in production facilities, bulk tank farms, rail transload facilities, construction sites, and retail fueling stations within your community and throughout the country. Depending on the size of your jurisdiction or response area, it may be impractical to pre-plan every retail facility offering ethanol blended fuels. However, it is realistic and highly recommended that standard operating procedures or guidelines, SOPs or SOGs, be developed to ensure consistency in emergency response addressing life safety, incident stabilization, and property conservation. Therefore, it is important for local emergency responders to be familiar with the facilities and their locations. Any large volume of denatured fuel ethanol will typically be stored in conventional carbon steel storage tanks such as those that are suitable for gasoline and other flammable fuels. Denatured fuel ethanol can also be stored in stainless steel storage tanks, although these tanks are less common. As consumption increases, larger ethanol tanks will become increasingly prevalent. These tanks should be identified by markings corresponding with the fuel stored. There are several types of above ground atmospheric storage tanks typically found at bulk storage facilities. The most common bulk storage tanks for ethanol blended fuels are cone roof and dome roof tanks, open top floating roof tanks, covered floating roof tanks, including geodesic domes and horizontal storage tanks. Lastly, please note that spherical tanks do exist for bulk storage. To date, this type of tank design has been limited to petrochemical, flammable liquids, or gases normally stored under pressure. Currently, there are no known use of these tanks for storage of ethanol blended fuels. It is incumbent upon any organization and agencies that have statutory responsibilities or functional capabilities to become familiar with bulk storage and ethanol production facilities to determine the nature and type of bulk storage tanks being used and develop detailed pre-plans. There are four general types of storage tanks at tank farm facilities. Cone roof tanks or closed top, external floating roof or EFR tanks, which have an open top with a floating pan, internal floating roof tanks, IFR, with a closed top and an internal floating pan, and horizontal storage tanks. Dome roof or geodesic retrofitting over a majority of the open floating roof tanks have been taking place within the U.S. for the past decade or more to address regulatory requirements, vapor control, and product integrity. This type of bulk storage tank may contain ethanol blended fuels. Horizontal tanks may be found and used for ethanol blended fuels in bulk storage facilities, retail markets, agricultural application, and private residences where regulatory codes allow. The most common denatured fuel ethanol bulk storage tanks are internal floating roof tanks, or IFR. Key characteristics to look for on IFR tanks are a closed roof over an internal floating pan, eyebrow venting, and as noted in the photograph, a fire protection system. Spill containment dikes are required to contain the volume of the largest tank within the contained area, plus a certain portion over tank capacity to take into consideration rainfall and ancillary spills during an incident. Specific dike containment information can be found in NFPA 30 Flammable and Combustible Liquids Code. 
Additional fluid from a firefighting operation could lead to overfilling or breaching of the dike. As a side note, large horizontal tanks that are elevated do not fall under the same regulatory requirements for containment. These are much more common at smaller distribution facilities and in agricultural settings. Some storage tanks have fixed or built-in fire protection systems. Fixed systems are a combination of components including foam concentrate storage, proportioning valves, and delivery devices that are permanently installed to provide fire suppression protection. These same fixed systems can serve as multiple storage tanks, piping manifolds, and loading and unloading racks. The systems can be activated manually or by automatic detection device. Topside application foam systems may require much higher application rates for ethanol blended fuels than for previously stored fuels. Subsurface injection systems may not work at all with ethanol blended fuels. Emergency responders should be working closely with terminal operators to keep abreast of changes in fuel storage at liquid product terminals. It is important to ensure the fire protection systems are meeting current industry standards and codes. It is also important that emergency responders know how to activate the fire protection systems at a liquid product terminal. Where the fixed fire protection systems exist, it is incumbent upon emergency responders to establish a close working relationship with the owners and management. They must develop pre-plans of these bulk storage facilities, determine resource needs for successful mitigation of an incident, and of course, conduct functional and full-scale exercises to confirm the pre-plan and operational activities are realistic and achievable. The illustration is an example of a built-in type 1 fixed or type 2 semi-fixed fire protection system on a bulk storage tank containing ethanol. In this photograph, it is worth noting the biological growth on the side of the bulk storage tank. The exterior of the storage tank sweats more profusely when significant amounts of high concentration ethanol blends are present during warmer temperatures. This moisture captures the organic particulates in the atmosphere and ultimately leads to an algae-like growth on the sides of the tank. There will also be biological growth around the eyebrow vents at the top of the tank in internal floating roofs or IFRs. The graphic on the left identifies foam solution in blue, which is foam concentrate properly proportioned and mixed with water and distributed through fire protection piping at predetermined pressures and flow rates. Once the foam solution enters the foam chamber, it is agitated and aerated to allow for the foam to expand to the manufacturer requirements of eight to 10 to one ratio. At this point, the finished foam as shown in the image in light green, penetrates the wall of the tank, discharged out of the specifically designed nozzle, which deflects the foam back onto the side wall of the tank. The finished foam sloughs down the inner wall of the tank and gently spreads across the surface of the burning ethanol blended fuel. These systems are designed and engineered for each specific installation. During an incident, the actual condition of the fire protection system must be assessed to determine if functional. Ultimately, emergency responders must plan for the worst possible scenario. For example, the fire protection system is out of service and type 3 or manual foam applications will be initiated if offensive foam operations commence. Also note that NFPA 704 placard indicating the tank's contents. These pictures are examples of the foam expansion chamber attached to most type two fixed foam chamber discharge outlets. The photograph on the right provides a visual reference to the actual workings of the foam system as explained in the previous slide. It is important to work with bulk storage facility operators to calculate the outage or open available space in gallons above the liquid level in the tank to inform emergency responders whether the product needs to be removed from the tank before operations can begin or allowed to burn off to reduce product in the tank. 
failure to comprehend the available space inside the storage tank could lead to overfill and having ethanol blended fuel spillage and complicate the incident drastically. Expansion needs to be taken into consideration. This would be the ratio of volume of foam formed to the volume of solution used to generate the foam. For example, an eight expansion means 800 gallons of foam from 100 gallons of solution. Keep in mind, foam drain time will continue throughout the operation. As discussed consistently throughout this module, pre-planning for potential incidents at liquid product terminals is extremely important. A significant piece of the pre-planning efforts must include consideration and development of mutual aid partners. Fire departments that help provide protection to liquid product terminals should have access to high flow firefighting foam equipment and access to large supplies of compatible alcohol resistant aqueous film forming foam or ARAFFF. Emergency response agencies or organizations should also be aware they may not be able to contend with a terminal fire operation and may need to contact additional outside resources or assistance to manage an incident of scope and magnitude. Emergency responders are encouraged to establish healthy working relationships with these groups and with the storage facilities in their response area prior to an emergency. Fixed fire protection systems are currently the best protection for bulk storage tanks. Fire department personnel should be extremely familiar with these systems and pre-calculate their required flow rates and resource needs. They should also pre-plan operations supplying these systems. Practical exercises should be scheduled at least annually to make sure emergency responders are familiar with the pre-plans and operational activities. In some areas, this has been done by establishing caches of AR, AFFF, and equipment through consortiums organized among multiple terminal operations, fire departments, state and other organizations or agencies with statutory responsibilities or functional capabilities. The consortium philosophy is a process of collaboration to develop a significant cache of AR, AFFF foam concentrates at a predetermined geographical location, properly managed and supervised and available as a regional asset for ethanol blended fuel incidents. No one agency, department, or organization bears the financial burden of buying, storing, and managing such a costly resource. Lastly, all organizations should consider and apply for grant funding when available. Keep in mind that there are many different challenges involved in firefighting operations at a liquid product terminal. There may be limited access in both the terminal itself and in take design for firefighting equipment. At times, some locations may have inadequate water supplies to fight any type of significant fire. Personnel may have to contend with containment dikes and their systems along with miles of exposed product piping. Liquid product terminals may also have loading racks subject to fire emergencies. Liquid product terminal operations can be very complicated and responding to a fire emergency can be very dangerous to personnel. It is also not unusual for terminals that were originally built in remote areas to now be surrounded by commercial and residential growth. We cannot overemphasize that pre-planning is extremely important as are pre-established working relationships between the fire department and the facility operators. The absolute backbone to successfully managing an incident involving ethanol blended fuel is ensuring an excellent working relationship with the bulk storage owners, vendors, and agencies or organizations that have statutory responsibilities and or functional capabilities. Also, consider contracting with private flammable liquid firefighting organizations if possible. Smaller bulk distribution storage facilities may pose unique challenges to local fire departments. These facilities are located throughout communities to better distribute fuel to end users. Storage tanks in these facilities can be a multitude of styles and layouts depending on age and location. Storage tanks may be vertical, 
horizontal, or a combination of both. Normally, flammable liquid fuels, including gasoline and ethanol blended fuel, are stored at these facilities in modest quantities. Most of these facilities do not have built-in fire protection systems. These facilities are normally designed with limited fuel spillage containment structures or dikes and are typically unstaffed. Large bulk storage facilities also pose unique challenges to local fire departments. Storage tanks in these facilities have high capacity storage and high product transfer capabilities. A variety of different storage tanks may be present, vertical, horizontal, above ground or below ground, or a combination of all of these. Flammable liquids, including gasoline and ethanol blended fuels, are stored at these facilities in significant quantities. These facilities have detailed emergency response plans due to the sheer volume stored on site. Pre-established working relations between the emergency responders and the facility operators is extremely important. Pre-planning cannot be overemphasized. Depending on the age of the bulk storage facility and geographic location, fixed or semi-fixed foam fire protection systems may be found. The capabilities and limitations of these systems can only be determined through extensive familiarization and functional training. The photographs in this slide depict typical installations of ethanol blended fuel storage and are worthy of discussion as they may relate to your specific response area. Both denatured and undenatured or neat ethanol can be stored at a production facility, although the most common is denatured fuel ethanol, E95 to E98. Ethanol blended fuels found in retail fuel stations are not generally found at a production facility. There will be denaturant such as natural gasoline or unleaded gasoline stored at a production facility. Denaturants are added to ethanol through inline blending systems prior to the final product storage tanks. A typical example is shown in this photo. In this tank configuration, ethanol would be stored in the tanks identified as one and two. The denaturant would be stored in the tank identified as three. Currently, there are approximately 121,000 retail fueling stations throughout the U.S. Geography, throughput volume and sales, fire code and many other variables impact whether an above ground or below ground storage tank is used. Above ground storage tanks can be either vertical or horizontal in design. Nearly all underground storage tanks are horizontal. Inventory is brought to the retail station by cargo tank trucks and is transferred directly into the underground storage tanks. Some jurisdictions have hundreds of retail fueling stations selling ethanol blended fuel. Pre-planning each retail facility would be extremely time consuming and labor intensive, since these facilities must be constructed and maintained to nationally recognized standards, development of standard operating procedures or standard operating guidelines may be practical to ensure consistent operational practices and increase emergency responders and community safety if an ethanol blended fuel incident were to occur. At retail sites, the most common tank configuration is horizontal underground tanks. The maximum pressure that any underground tank can hold is 0.5 pounds per square inch gauge. Tank capacities range from a few thousand gallons up to 20,000 gallons. These tanks are typically constructed of steel or double-walled fiberglass. Emergency shutoff valves will vary for each container due to the design and construction differences. Loading and unloading points will vary due to design and construction. Risers for multiple tanks will be color-coded or marked to identify the product. In this module, we learned that denatured fuel ethanol, E95 to E98, is most commonly stored in storage tanks made of carbon steel. Denatured fuel ethanol can also be stored in stainless steel storage tanks, although these tanks are less common. Pre-planning for potential events at liquid product terminals is extremely important. Emergency responders should develop good working relationships 
with the terminal operators and should be very familiar with their operations. Liquid product terminals will likely be equipped with fixed fire protection systems. It is important to remember that these systems could be rendered inoperable at the onset of an incident. From the liquid product terminals, the ethanol blended fuels arrive at local retail fueling stations, mostly by cargo tank trucks. These stations will use underground and above ground storage tanks. Although the amount of fuel stored at each retail fueling station is small, especially when compared to liquid product terminals, the sheer number of retail fueling stations requires that an SOP or SOG be established to ensure safe and consistent operational activities during incidents. If possible, developing a pre-plan would be most advantageous.